accrued interest. So accrued interest is kind of the interest has has uh, increased, but possibly you haven't received the interest at that point in time. So when you buy bonds between interest payment dates and pay accrued interest to the seller, this inter this interest is taxable to the seller. So if you received a form 1099 for interest as a purchaser of a bond with accrued interest, follow the rules earlier under nominees to see how to report the accrued interest, but uh, identify the amount to be subtracted as accrued interest. So you might end up with a similar kind of situation situation where the 1099 possibly has to be adjusted obviously you have to tie in the 1099 what's on it to what's on your forms or you're going to have a problem so if you need to have something different than that you would want to show the detail of of the change and the adjustment to it so that so that you could say hey this is what's on the 1099 this is why there's a change to it this is what I'm reporting after that change is taking place. Original issue discount, the OID. If you are reporting OID in an amount less than the amount shown in box one or box eight of form 1099 OID, follow the rules earlier under nominees to see how to report the OID, but identify the amount to be subtracted as OID adjustment similar kind of scenario here you got something possibly different than what's on the 1099 we've got to tie into what's on the 1099 we need to show the work show the detail so that we don't get uh, confused the irs and a confused irs with our particular tax return causes us problems however if the payer reported uh, to you a net amount of oid on the bond reflecting the offset of the gross amount of oid by any acquisition acquisition is confirmed in premium no uh, reduction of the amount of oid income reported to you by the buyer may be needed on schedule b for the bond amortizable bond premium so now you've got you know when you buy the bond if you're buying if you're investing in bonds then it's likely that if you're if you're a, a, a passive kind of investor a long-term investor you might be in investing in like mutual funds that have bonds within them which is a little bit different than investing like in individual bonds uh themselves uh but a bond when you think about a bond in general you're basically uh giving money like a, a note a loan in essence to a corporation or government entity and the rate on the bond is fixed so you might pay actually more than or less more or less than the face amount of the bond if you pay more than uh, the face amount of the bond, then you bought the bond at a premium and you've got to allocate basically the premium or the difference in between the premium and the face amount is basically considered interest. And then you could deal with this kind of premium problem, right? You've got this kind of premium problem that could have taxable implications with it. So amortizable bond premium. So if you elect to reduce your interest income on a taxable bond by the amount of taxable amortizable bond premium, follow the rules earlier under the nominees to see how to report the interest. So if that is again the case, then you might end up with a situation where your 1099 isn't reporting the proper amount of interest after you take into consideration the amortizable bond premium and you're gonna have to show your work again to not confuse the IRS but identify the amount to be subtracted as ABP adjustment. So however, if the payer reported to you a net amount of the interest income on the bond reflecting the offset of the gross amount of interest income by the amortizable bond premium, no reduction of the amount of interest income reported to you by the payer is needed on schedule B for the bond. Okay, so now we have the tax exempt interest. So this would be that scenario where it would have been income, but now the IRS is explicitly saying it's exempt for whatever reason that they they don't they're, they're going to give some benefit to certain uh, issuers or of of debt, right? Some beneficial, uh, which possibly are going to be the states, so the governments. Government. So if you if you give money to the loan money to the government then you might get a benefit. You could see why they might want to do that as a government entity. So if you received any tax exempt interest, including any tax exempt OID, such as from municipal bonds, 
So those are going to be government bonds in essence. Each payer should send uh, you a form 1099-INT or form 1099-OID. In general, your tax exempt status interest should be shown in box 8 of form 1099-INT. So we saw the 1099. It'll be indicated not you would think in box 1 but rather in box 8 to say hey you got to report this because you did get income but it's tax exempt so it shouldn't have a federal income tax component for it or 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 calculation to it so for tax exempt oid in box two of form 1099 oid and your tax exempt oid should be shown in box 11 of form 1099 oid so enter the total on line 2a of your form 1040 1040 sr so that's to be the tax exempt place i would assume so however if you acquire a tax exempt bond at a premium only report the net amount of tax exempt interest on line 2a or your form 1040 or 1040 sr that is excess of the tax exempt interest received during the year over the amortized bond premium for the year so also if you acquire tax exempt oid bond at an acquisition premium only report the net amount of the tax exempt oid on line 2a of form 1040 or 1040 sr that is excess of the tax exempt oid for the year over the amortized acquisition premium for the year if you have more questions about that situation you can see publication 550 for more information on oid bond premium and acquisition premium also include on line 2a of your form 1040 or 1040 sr any uh, exempt interest dividends from a mutual fund or other regulated investment company this amount should be shown in box 12 of form 1099 div so we'll talk about dividends later if an amount is shown in box 9 of form 1099 int you must generally report it on line 2g of form uh, 6251 see instructions for form 6251 if you're in that situation line 3 if during 2022 you cashed series ee or ius savings bonds issued after 1989 and you paid qualified higher education expenses for yourself your spouse or your dependents you may be able to exclude part or all of the interest on those bonds so if you've got those bonds in place the ee bonds education then you could take a look at form uh, 8815 for more details there.